thank you to the foundation for having me here. This has been a really exciting day, and I'm um, grateful to all of the speakers for all of the great work that you've been doing and for coming here to share it with all of us and to everyone here and everyone who's participating remotely, especially if we still have people participating from Laos and, and far, far away. Um, it's been really engaging and, and interesting discussion. So my name's Sherry. I am a technical advisor for digital health at Management Sciences for Health. Um, MSH works um, across all levels of the health system in countries around the world to, to focus on closing the gap between knowledge and action to really try to make measurable improvements in the lives of the poor and, and most vulnerable. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you work from the Knowledge for Health project. So k for health is uh, led by the Johns Hopkins Center for Communications Programs, and it's supported through USAID's Global Health Bureau. It's their flagship project for knowledge management. And it includes a large focus on digital health. And um, k for health has been working to serve this community, the M Health and digital health community, for almost a decade, and really came about from a lot of the needs that we've talked about here today, in which the foundation in this conference helps to address, which is, the need for um, having a community, for sharing information, for sharing the lessons that we all learn as we implement these kind of new and innovative programs, um, and doing that in a, in a space that's very rapid and, and ever-changing and, and the environment kind of continues to develop, um, as well as to try to identify and collect the evidence around this space. So I'm gonna be talking about some of the, the activities which k for health supports um, through the Global Digital Health Network. I know some of you may already be familiar with it. I hope um, by the end of this conversation, you'll all want to be familiar with, with the network and also want to be members and, and join, um, join this community as well. Um, the Global Digital Health Network used to be referred to as the M Health uh, Working Group. So some of you may be familiar with it that way. It, uh, went to the Global Digital Health Network to really expand and, and include everyone who's working in digital health outside of just the mobile focus. Um, and it currently has over 2,800 members who have joined this um, informal working group and, and knowledge sharing platform from over 100 countries around the world. Um, so if you would like to, to join, it's globaldigitalhealthnetwork.org is, is where you can go and access a lot of these resources that I'm going to discuss. It's supported uh, through USAID and through the k for health project and through the advisory board, which is um, made up of, of members of uh, global health organizations who are working around the world. So it's really trying to be a forum for everyone who, who's in this room and, and everyone who's working in digital health around the world. So one of the ways that, that we try to share information and try to, to build this community is through the monthly meetings that are hosted by the network. And so you can join um, online and you can and learn more about what's gonna happen. Some of the recent ones are shared um, here uh, we have a meeting every month. Uh, a couple times a year we'll do what, what's called a deep dive, where it's really a half day of focus on a specific challenge that um, the digital health participants have identified and how do you address those challenges, how do we learn, so really kind of getting into here's some practical strategies for addressing some of the issues that you've seen. We just recently held one on digital financial services. So if you're interested in um, opportunities through mobile money, how can you integrate mobile money into the work that you're doing? These are all, um, you can join in person if you happen to be in Washington, D.C. when they're happening. They're also all available through webinar, so you're welcome to join online and engage in conversations. And they're um, recorded, so if any of these interest you, you can go online and actually listen in and, and see those resources available as well. M Health Knowledge was um, started by k for health in this effort to collect all of these resources. So we all are talking about these interesting activities and resources 
and toolkits and some of the other speakers have mentioned specific guides and, and tools. And we wanted to find one place to put all of that information so that everyone, everyone knows where to go to find the best information. So you can go to mhealthknowledge.org and it'll link you to all of these other resources. And if you have great resources that aren't here yet, uh, there's an opportunity to, to send that information in so it can get added here as well. Um, there are information here that's in French. There's information that's in Spanish and Portuguese. So there's a, a number of different resources. And I know that there's a, a lot of interest in, in continuing to grow those resources so that we're all learning from each other and not just siloed into the specific um, language areas. It includes the archives for projects which have done a lot of interesting work but might have closed. So this is a great place if there's resources for a program that, it, that may no longer be continuing to, to include those resources here. mhealthevidence.org is the, F, the work supported by k for health to gather the both peer-reviewed and the gray literature on M Health and digital health, and it includes resources, uh, over 9,000 resources, actually. So there's, there's a lot to read on uh, the evidence for digital health. And it includes um, information from projects and from, and from peer-reviewed literature, so I would encourage you also to, to review that and organize it in a number of different ways to try to allow you to find um, uh, evidence on what you're looking for. And uh, the M Health Planning Guide was created by the K for Health Project to provide a resource if you're thinking about in integrating digital health into your program. What do you need to think about? How do you plan for the work that you're going to do? And it's also available in French, so I encourage you to, to find that online if you would like copies for colleagues who are not able to, I think it was mentioned earlier today, download speeds can be challenging in, in many of the countries in which we work. Um, you can also order it on CD-ROM um, uh, for, for colleagues in, in locations where it can't be downloaded. The M Health Compendium was a series of documents that were produced under the African Strategies for Health Project. And these were done um, by MSH under USAID's Africa Bureau. And it was really focusing on, on providing information in a snapshot form, profiles of uh, digital health programs, similar to the kinds of conversations that we've had today, but to, to let somebody who wants to learn about a number of different programs have that information at their fingertips. Um, so there's over 150 applications that have uh, profiles available. You can go online. Also, all of these, all of these items that I'm mentioning are, are linked to through M Health Knowledge and through the Global Digital Health Network. So you can go in and search for information that is specific to the location, to the specific health area. Um, you know, what type of categories are you looking for behavior change communication examples, examples of, of finance or data collection, and you can gather all of that information. And I would also uh, want to let you know that all of those compendia have been translated, so they're also available in French and in Portuguese as well. The uh, digital health database dashboards uh, have been created by Health Enabled through uh, k for health support and through other support as well. The foundation has um, been supporting translation into French for a number of countries. So these are dashboards where you can go online and if you're looking into maybe expanding into a new country or you work in a particular country and you want to get more information on what's the current environment, how do I learn more about what else is going on, what's been tried here, what are the policies that I need to be aware of, um, the dashboards provide a lot of that information in a single snapshot so you can go and look and see all of the links to the, the health policies if they exist in the country or other particular information that might be of use uh, as you're thinking about how you're going to be doing your work. 
So every year, the Global Digital Health Network wants to bring together uh, communities who work in this in this space. And every year, it's it's grown, and it's a, an exciting forum. So this year in Washington, D.C., in December, is going to be the Global Digital Health Forum. So last year, we had over 400 participants. Uh, we had participants coming in from around the world to share their experience and their knowledge and the research that they've done and to really engage uh, with others in the field. And um, I hope that to see many of you there in December. Um, it'll be an exciting, it's a three-day event, and we're looking to, to bring in a lot of interactive um, discussions. There'll be lab sessions where you can learn about how do you program um, a system or how do you adapt a program to what you're doing? How do you, um, how do you integrate? And there'll be um, an, what they call an happy hour session, like a happy hour, but for apps uh, <laughs> where they demonstrate the, the particular apps uh, of, of different programs that are being implemented. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to touch on the principles for digital development. So these are nine principles which have been developed over time and in consultation with a lot of organizations who've been working in uh, digital development. So beyond just digital health, uh, use of digital technology in agriculture programs and finance programs, uh, how do we think about and, ha and have kind of best practices and, and guidelines and information for individuals who want, for programs who want to start working with digital tools? How do we let them learn? What are some of the best practices? What are the things to think through as you embark on this type of work? And so the uh, principles for digital development were created as a in a collaborative discussion by a number of organizations. Um, and they're available at digitalprinciples.org. They're currently um, guided by the Digital Impact Alliance. DIAL is another organization with great resources to also um, to see. And they include a lot of guidelines for how do you think through these things? How do you make sure that you're designing with the user in mind so that your program is actually adapted to the needs that that specific end user has? And I would encourage everyone to be familiar with the principles if you're not already and to look into some of these additional resources. Um, so again, thank you very much for having me here. I have, a, I think there's some cards outside if you want the specific links to the resources that I mentioned earlier. I am open to hearing uh, from everyone and would love to know if you have additional connections that we can make through the, the Global Digital Health Network. We look forward to connecting further with everyone that we've met here. I've seen a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new faces. Um, and so I think this is a really exciting opportunity to kind of continue to spread knowledge uh, across uh, locations and organizations. Thank you. Thank you.